In this video, we are going to learn how to match skin tones in Photoshop and I'm super pumped up about this because every time I do it, it simply blows my mind. Now, what do I mean by this? You see, photography, photo manipulation or any other visual art form is subjective. You might like it, you might not like it, somebody else might like it and you might not like it. It's totally subjective. Now that's what we're going to try to do, try and solve it in this video. Now have a look at this image. Now you might like a skin tone, you might not like a skin tone, but sometimes you think that there's another image whose skin tone I prefer and I wish that she had the same skin tone as that image. So have a look at this image. So suppose you like the skin tone of her face. Now if you want to have the same skin tone in this image, what do you do? That's what we are going to do in this tutorial. Now have a look. This is what we are going to achieve from this. So I have three more examples of matching skin tones in this tutorial. So that because in all those three examples, we use the same basic principle. But it all has variations, different variations, different ways of doing it. So that you come into terms with different situations and challenges. So without any further ado, let's get started. Before we begin, I just wanted to tell you that we are just going to use the curves adjustment layer, the good old curves adjustment layer. So it doesn't matter what version of Photoshop you're using, it can even be CS1. <laughs> I don't know whether there's a version like that, but as old as Photoshop can go, curves has always been there. So you don't have to worry about the version of Photoshop. So let's jump straight in, no more excuses. So here we are in Photoshop and our objective, always first determine the objective. Objective is to make her skin tone just like her. So what do we do? The first step is to bring her, uh, her face into this image just for a reference. So to do that, just select her face, select the rectangular marquee tool, select her face, all right? Copy it, Control C or Command C if you're using a Mac. Get back to this image and paste it, Control V or Command V paste just like any other shortcut all right so this is a universal shortcut anyway so let's keep her beside her face so let's zoom in let's uh, make it bigger just for reference and to make it bigger or smaller you have to press ctrl t or command t this shows up the transformation tool and then you can make it smaller or bigger just for reference this just does not matter how much bigger or smaller it is now let's zoom in and now we need to make a sample. Now pick a spot where you have even skin tone. Now select this layer, this layer, this lady's layer, all right? And pick a spot, zoom in, where there is even skin tone. To do that, select the rectangular marquee tool and select the area with even, you know, color. So select it, for example, in this, it would be this. All right, select it. Now once you're done, all you need to do, you need to press Ctrl J or Command J if you're using a Mac. So we have a separate layer just of this sample. Now we need to make an average of this skin tone. To do that, press and hold Ctrl or Command and click on this layer. This makes a selection of this sample. Now go to filter, blur, average. Now this creates a nice sample of her skin tone. Now we're gonna do the same with her. Let's turn this on and we're gonna do the same with her. Pick an area with an even skin tone. Don't select an area like this where half of it is black, half of it is light. You cannot even do something like this where you pick up her lips and stuff. Pick an area with something flat and not something like not something dark something in between so if you have picked the sample from her cheek make sure you pick the sample from her cheek too don't get to any other area don't get to her forehead don't even get to her neck don't try that picture can turn greenish and some crazy colors don't do that all right so select her cheek also and we'll use the same steps make sure this layer is selected this layer all right and control j then it makes a sample. Command J if you're using a Mac. Press and hold controller command, click on it. Go to filter, blur, average. All right, done. So we have two samples. So now let's turn off all the other layers and let's just open the sample layers. Now let's name this strip one. All right, you can name it anything you want. Strip two. Now our objective is to make this strip of this color. 
right? That's our objective and everything else will fall into place automatically. Now, what do you got to do? Let's bring this, these strips kind of together. Now, we need to sample from this and we need to bring out this color into this one. Now, to do that, make a curves adjustment layer. So to make a curves adjustment layer, click on this. All right, click on this half gray, half kind of circle icon and select curves. Now, let's dock it straight in right here. All right. Now, we need to sample this one. We need to take samples. We need to analyze what's in this one. We don't need to change it. We need to change this one. We need to analyze this one. To do that, make sure you click on this icon right here. Kind of eyedropper tool appears. Now, before clicking, press and hold shift key. So as you press and hold shift key, you see the icon changes to an eyedropper tool and a kind of target icon just beside that, just click on it. So as you can see, the info bar has appeared and we can dock it straight right here. And this is our first sample. It says the value of red here in this area is 200, green is 179 and blue is 186. What are the values on the right hand side? These are the output values that we are going to change. Now we need to change this one. So we need to also analyze this one and put the analysis values into the curves. So how do we do that? So as you, as you, as you can see, when I move my eyedropper tool around, okay, so this is clicked, okay? So this is clicked and I move, when I move my eyedropper tool around, you can see that it shows a certain value here, right? It shows a certain value, right? So if you go over to the red channel, it shows a certain value here. And if you show the blue channel, it shows a certain value right here. What this means is for this color, the values of red red green and blue red is this the value of green is this and so on and so forth so if i hover over this as you can see look here look at the input output look at the output it's 145 input is also 145 because that area is selected and we have not made any changes but when we make changes the output will be changed but the input will remain the same now here's the thing to make this to put this into the curves adjustment layer, all you need to do, you need to press and hold shift and control. Okay, let's move back to RGB. Press and hold shift and control. If you're using a Mac, shift command, hold that and then click on it. You see nothing happens, but when you select red, you see that spot is selected. When you switch to green, that spot is selected. Now our job is to, let's move the info panel here. Now our job is to, for this input value, we need to change the output value to match this one. And what's this input and out input value? Straight away mentioned right here, right? So the first thing that you need to do, move to red. All right, if you're not getting this, just follow along. All right, move to red. The input of red is 175 that we analyzed from here. So we need to change the output. So the output that we need to change to is 200 because this color's output is 200. So if you have deselected this by mistake, just click on it. It will be selected again and click, uh, from, put on the numbers like 200. All right. Don't watch this right now. Just watch this. Watch the left side of this. Don't worry about what the right side shows. Watch the left side. All right. Move on to green. What's the green? 179, right? Change 179. Let's move on to the blue one, 186, right? 186, great, done. Now here's the thing. There's a shortcut to switch between channels, red, green, and blue. Alt three for red, Alt four for blue, Alt, oh, I'm sorry, Alt four for green, Alt five for blue, and Alt three for red. Now, if you're using a Mac, it's option three, option four, option five, all right? so. This color has just become like this, but they don't look similar. Why? Because the curves adjustment layer is up being applied on both of them. So if I move this strip to above the curves adjustment layer, you can see both have now matched. So let's go ahead and move this. Oh, see, both have now matched. So let's turn on the strip uh, layers and just turn this on. Voila. Voila. Just click on it. Her skin tone has matched with this lady. Now, her skin tone has also changed. So if we move her above the curves adjustment layer, you can see her skin tone, her skin tone matched. Now here's the thing. 
that this curves adjustment layer, let's turn her off, this curves adjustment layer is applied all over the image. We just want it to be applied on her skin. So what do we do now? Select the, you know, mask here, right? You can see the mask. Press Control I. This inverts the mask and turns off the effect for all of the image. Now if I go ahead and take a brush and paint with white on her skin, the effect will only be applied on her skin. But there's a better way to do it. Select this layer and go to, just turn this off, select color range and click on her. So automatically as you can see, her skin tone is selected. You can increase or decrease the fuzziness, right? Click OK and select the mask. Make sure that white is your foreground color. Press Alt Backspace. All right, if you're using a Mac, it's Option Backspace D. As you can see, the effect has just been applied on her skin. Isn't that amazing? Now let's open this image for reference again. So now, as you can see, we have to tweak it. It has gone similar, but we have to tweak it. So we can set the black point if we want, right? So we can make it a little brighter and voila, we're done. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> so let's move on to our <coughs> next example. In this example, we're going to change her skin tone to match like her. Now here's the thing, what do you do? Follow the same steps that we did in example number one. Now I've already done it for you because I don't want to bore you with all those same step repetitive stuff. All right, so I've created this curves adjustment layer and I also have the reference image right beside her. Now it's quite not matching and the thing is we have to tweak it just a little bit. To do that, make sure you double click on this icon and Let's make it a little bit brighter. As you can see, her face is just a little brighter than hers. To make it brighter, just make sure that RGB is selected and increase the brightness. Now it's kind of matching like her. You can always go ahead and increase the contrast just a little bit to match like her. All right, now it's pretty much matching. Now here's the thing, let's turn her off. The curves adjustment layer is being applied to the image as a whole. Now you just want it to affect her skin tone. But here's the thing, you cannot, you just cannot go to select and color range and select her face because in the background, the color is somewhat similar to that in her face. So there's another way to do it. That's why I had this example. To do this, all you need to do, you need to make a copy of this background layer of her, just make a copy of it. To make a copy, you can just drag it and drop it here. The other way of making a copy is pressing Control or Command J. All right, this makes a copy. Now, name this mask, all right, or skin, whatever you want, okay? Now, make sure you select any selection tool. Any selection tool will do. It can be the rectangular marquee tool, it can be the lasso tool, whatever. Any selection, just select the rectangular marquee tool and as you can see, select and mask feature has just appeared. So click on the select and mask and begin selecting the skin. Make sure you change the view to on black or anything. Uh, you can also on white, you can turn this to on white, so whatever. So decrease the opacity just a little bit and start painting over her skin. Now, all right, it's pretty good. Okay, now we have pretty much selected the skin. You can always go ahead and deselect the areas that are not the skin, press and hold alter option, and this changes to a minus uh, icon, and two, all right, let's paint on the areas which are not skin, and there we go. Right, that's pretty good. You can select the hair if you want. Um, all right. Click OK. You can always go ahead and refine the selection later. I'm just doing it very quickly. Click OK. And there you go. Just the skin is selected. But still, as you can see, the curves adjustment layer is being applied to the whole image. Now for that, for the curves adjustment layer to be applied in just this layer, just this layer in which just the skin is there, you need to make a clipping mask. Now how to do that? Make the curves adjustment layer just above the skin layer and press and hold alter option. You see the icon change? to a square and an arrow, just click. Watch, it just affects the skin. Now you can always go ahead and refine the selection later, but that's what the basis is. That's what I wanted to explain. Now let's move on to our next example. I'm so sorry about what's happening in the background. I just request you to please ignore it uh, because I just cannot stop making videos for you guys. 
You're awesome. All right, so in this example, as you can see, what if I want her makeup? Now, in this, I wanna match makeups, all right? So let's zoom straight in, and I wanna match her face to her, all right? To do that, we'll use the same steps that we used in example number one, all right? So I've already done it for you. I've made the curves adjustment layer for you, and everything is sorted. So as you can see, I've opened this, all right, now here's the thing. If you zoom in, you can see that her face is a little more reddish and we have to tweak it. All right, so double click on it, make sure red is selected and let's just try increasing the red just a little bit. Just a little bit, now it's matching. It's matching better, right? Psst, yep, all right. So anything else you wanna do? Suppose you think blue is little less or more, you can always go ahead and select whatever you want. You think green is less or more, you can I think decreasing it helps just a little bit. All right, all right. Now the face has matched. The thing is, in this example, the body is not matching. As you can see, it has turned green. Now we'll talk about it in just a minute. Now in the previous two examples, in the first example, we used select color range. But in this, this won't work because we need to match the body separately. And in the second example, we use select and mask. And it's kind of difficult in this because we just wanted to match the makeup and body separately. So that's kind of becoming difficult. So in this example, all you need to do, you need to do it manually. To do it manually, let's turn her off. First, because there's a little bit of distraction and select this curve mask and press Control i Select a brush and make sure the foreground color is white and start painting on her face. You can always leave the lips if you don't want the lips to change. So you can do a little bit of coloring here and there. Make sure you don't go to her hair. Save the hair, all right? color it. You don't have to be super accurate, but try to be as accurate as possible. You have to be accurate and soft at the same time. All right, a little bit of spill over does not matter. All right, so now that you're done with the face, all right, let's do it really quickly. As you can see, that's too much. If you think that's too much, you can always go ahead and decrease the opacity. All right, that's sound looking pretty good. And now here's the thing, her body is not matching. If I paint over, see, I'm painting over her body, but her body is not matching at all. To make her body match, all we need to do, we need to create a separate curves layer. So let's make a duplicate of this and just we just need a little bit of tweaking because it's similar to her skin tone, it's not totally different. So a little bit of tweaking in the settings can make us go a long way. Now, here's the thing, so in this one, delete this, you know, mask. All right, delete layer mask, delete it. And we're gonna create a new layer mask all over again. So we want a negative layer mask, black layer mask. So instead of creating a layer mask and pressing Control or Command I to make it black, there's a tip. Press and hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask icon. It will appear as a black layer mask. Now go ahead and start painting with white on her body. Make sure white is selected, make sure mask is selected and start painting on her body. Now, all right, let's paint on her hands arms all right let's open it now we need to match it so if you think it's a little bit of greenish you can go to green and decrease the green color all right now it's starting to look beautiful blue and red if you think it's a little more reddish you can go ahead and decrease the reds if you want to if you think it needs to be a little brighter you can go ahead and make it a little brighter if you think it's a little more yellowish See, here's the thing. To make anything look yellow, you decrease the blues. To make anything looking less yellow, increase the blues. So go to blue and it try to increase it. Whoa, whoa. Now it's matching, right? So you can see I'm not doing an I've not done an excellent job about it, but it's matching. So it's spilled over a little to the face. You can always select the mask and paint it with black right here and paint this areas with white, right? So there's a lot of things you can do. You can always go ahead and make another curves for this area to make it look less yellowish, select the blues and do stuff like that, all right? So the conclusion is, it's just the curves adjustment layer. The first step, 
to summarize. The first step, make a sample of both the images, all right? The image that you want to match your colors to, the image you want to take the reference from. Make a sample of both the image, the sample skin tone. Now, match the sample skin tone and everything else will fall into place. Sometimes you might have to tweak the curves adjustment layer. And now here's the thing. Sometimes the curves adjustment layer just doesn't give you the right result even if you sampled it properly. So at that time you need to change the sample areas, try a new, try a different sample area. Sometimes increasing the sample area also helps. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any suggestions, questions, feedback, do leave them down in the comments below and I'll surely get back to you. Thanks for joining me and if you need some extra help and support and if you want to support the Show, please make sure you head over to Patreon. Patreon is a voluntary subscription service that allows you to pay whatever you want, whatever you want, to help make Pixim Perfect free forever. Thanks for watching. Keep creating.